Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShark.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Today I'm going to modify the power supply for this uh, Yobo Super Nintendo module. I'm uh, going for a car ride tomorrow. It's going to be a long car ride, so I want to play some Super Metroid. Uh, I'm going. I need uh, to mod the power supply so that I can plug it into my cigarette lighter in the car because that connects directly to the battery. And so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to take this wireless adapter. I'm going to cut the wires. And I'm going to measure current along the wires during uh, gameplay to determine just how much current I need to uh, to uh, basically to play. The, the regulator is rated for 5 volts at 1 amp, and I'm going to actually see if it's requiring actually upwards of 1 amp during gameplay. So first of all, I'm going to cut the wire. First thing I'm going to need, going to, need to do is cut off uh, one wire here because I don't know which one's positive and negative. So I'm going to give myself enough wire to play with and cut actually closer to the AC adapter itself. Now again, I'm just going to cut the wire in half here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to separate them and just simply pull. Now I'm going to take a shot in the dark and cut I'm actually going to cut both of them uh, so that I can determine the polarity, which is ground, which is DC. And then we're going to do a current measurement while plugged into the unit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my positive probe and my negative probe and probe both points while I plug it in. Uh, it doesn't matter which one, we're going to be able to determine by this measurement which is the ground pin, which is the DC pin. So make sure that the pins are uh, separated far enough so that they won't short when you plug it in. It's all good. This is a regulated 5 volt, so it's not going to hurt us if we touch it. So I'm going to touch my red probe to one end, black probe to the other. And you see how on the multimeter it says negative 5.18 volts? That means we've got the polarity uh, reversed. So what I'm going to do is connect my ground to this wire and my positive to this wire. And now that negative sign is gone. So we're actually measuring uh, 5.18 volts. So now my that that tells us that my right my right probe, the wire on my right probe is negative ground, and the, this uh, wire on my positive probe is positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this wire, and we're going to do a current measurement across it when we plug in our unit. So I've plugged in Super Metroid. Now I have to set up my multimeter to measure current. I'm set up for reading amps DC and I've got my red probe connected to the 10A 10 amp input. I plugged in my AC adapter. Right now the internal battery is, is uh, recharging. Uh, I've got the red probe connected to the AC uh, one, of the, one side of the AC adapter, the, the positive wire that I've cut in half. Uh, the red wire is the incoming power from the adapter. The black is the path to the uh, game port to the game uh, to the SNES and uh, it's measuring about half an amp of power so that's its charge so now I'm going to turn the system on here goes nothing there we go hooray so it's working and it's asking about 800 give or take milliamps from the uh, from the adapter. So I imagine that's both charging the battery and playing it. So what happens? I wonder if I disconnect the battery. So what was inside was a uh, rechargeable lithium-ion battery, and we're going to keep that because I obviously don't want to get rid of it. But right now there's no battery. Uh, the device is only asking uh, roughly six six milliamps, and that's probably to power the LED and maybe some. Uh, low power sleep mode uh, options within the processor. In any case, I'll press power on and see what happens. And it powers on. And now it's only asking about half of what it was asking before. So it's no longer recharging the battery. So this is ideal for me because I don't want to have to worry about uh, heat when I'm using 12 volts for my car battery. I'm going to have to bring that 12 volts down to 5 volts, which means I'm going to have 7 volts dropped across the regulator. That with asking a whole bunch of current, the processor, or sorry, the regulator is going to get really, really hot. Now, I'm not going to use a 7805 5 volt regulator. I'm going to use a, a beefier one. I'm going to use a, an LM2596 step down module. And that should make things a heck of a lot easier for me. So let's test that out. So now I've set my multimeter up, meter up for uh, uh, DC voltage measurement. 
And this is my LM2596 module. We sell these at engineeringshock.com. They're very, re very reliable, and you can use this uh, onboard variable resistor to tune the output properly. So I've got, because car batteries can go as high as 14 or 15 volts, I've got 14.3 volts at the input. Now, the output will stay the same depending on the, uh, even if the input sways between 12 and 15 volts. And there is a nice capacitor on the output, and there is a capacitor on the input of the SNES. So that'll keep it nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the output. Right now, I've got basically the input voltage on it. 14.11 volts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take screwdriver and I'm going to tune that to 5 volts. Actually I'm going to tune it to just under 5 volts. 4.8 volts should be perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, a little bit later, I'm going to take a little piece of glue and put it or place it over the top of the variable resistor to keep it uh, to keep it steady. Now just to show you that the output will stay as long as the variable resistor doesn't move, I'm going to vary the input voltage between 12 and 15 volts. So I might sway a tiny bit, but not much. So 11 volts and 15 volts. So the output stays the same. So this is a perfect module for what I'm going to try. Now I'm going to connect the output to my uh, to the SNES, and first of all, we'll just see if it works. Now there's no reason why it shouldn't work, but we're going to do it just a uh, just to test it. Then we'll do a current measurement, then we'll hook it up to our car. So for a test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in power right now. I'm going to put 14 volts on the 14.4 volts on the input. And we'll see the the um, so it powers it up, a okay. Uh, next to no current is required by my uh, from my uh, digital power supply, so I'm going to power it on. And it works. And it said, my, my power supply is saying that it's only requiring about uh, 200 millivolts, or sorry, 200 milliamps at 14 volts. So I think uh, maybe my digital power supply or my multimeter might need a calibration because there's a little, some, there's something's a little bit off there. But in any case, I can now safely run this from my, uh, from my uh, car. So now what I need to do is I need to find a, a cigarette lighter adapter and connected to the uh, to the input ports of the uh, of the regulator so I found a uh, a uh, car adapter a 12 volt adapter that I can plug into my car uh, I'm not sure if it's regulated or not I'm hoping it's not yeah in any case I'm gonna give it a try first I'm gonna hack off the end and see what I find it seems like the outputs are uh, red and white so I imagine red is of uh, is positive 12 volts or car battery and uh, white is ground so I'm going to double check that I'm going to pop this into my car and test it hopefully there's not a regulator in here if there is I'm going to have to find something else to use but just for the sake of testing I'll bring my, my multimeter out set it up for a DC measurement measure uh, black on the negative wire positive on the red wire and see what I measure I'll check back in just a second some bad news and some great news it is regulated uh, and this was designed to power, uh, to charge uh, an iPhone. And so there is a regulated 5 volts of the output. And because an iPhone uh, and any cell phone is going to take 500 milliamps when plugged into a charge, uh, that means that we can easily power uh, our, uh, our device directly with this power supply, this regulated power, power supply. So plug in here into the car, and there's a regulated 5 volts here. So I can skip the regulator. So now what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to connect this red wire directly to the power supply wire and uh, shield it with some heat shrink and connect the negative uh, of the power supply wire to the SNES to the negative pin. So we can just plug this in directly and use it as a regulated power supply. So I'm glad that you're able to follow along with me because based on doing this, we've learned something. Thank you, Dollar Store Charger. You saved the day. So now I'm going to go to the car, I'm going to plug it in, and we'll see if it works. Okay, it's kind of noisy out here. I've got the uh, adapter in the back connected directly to the 12 volt source. And it's being regulated by the adapter. And I'm going to go around to the other side of the car and turn the key so the power is applied to the cigarette lighter port.
Okay, so green LED turns on. And it works. So even if I turn the car on, it might have reset there. I think it did reset. Sorry about that. But now the car is running. I should be able to safely play it. Yep, there we go. Using that 5 volt uh, adapter. Works great. So that's it guys. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this video. It's uh, just something I wanted to throw together. We hit some snags, but uh, I think I learned something anyhow. So thanks for watching and have a great day.